Hello there once again. This time we've got a realistic TRC-1001 handheld CB radio. These come from 1981. Very versatile sets. We've got this on an external microphone so we can set it up for, with the test setup alright. You do have the normal telescopic aerial which is uh, one and a half meters length. We've plugged into the external speaker socket for the test instruments, squash and volume, relative RF output and the channel selector. On the side, high low power which is 4 watts not 0.4 watts, external antenna which we plugged into the test set, charger socket which are 2.1 millimeter um, power connectors and we're plugged into the power supply. Now when you're working on these the power supply is 12.4 volts. Don't be tempted to put 13.8 through these otherwise you'll be losing the audio IC which is virtually impossible to get now these are 30 years old. If we remove the battery cover this, you put 10 rechargeable batteries in this 10 times 1.2 volts equals 12 volts or you put eight normal throwaway batteries in, eight times 1.5 volts also equals 12 volts, in which case you put two dummy batteries, which these were originally supplied with but are readily available. For example, Maplins do those. So put them back together. I've already taken this apart and it's coming for service. It was lasting for service 16 years ago. So I have seen this one before. And this is an early one. And on the early one, there isn't an RF adjustment potentiometer, which is somewhere around there. So it's all done with the coils. And then you have to detune it if it's over the 3.5 watts. And they're not 4 watts, they are 3.5 watts. If you go to 4 watts, it makes very little difference to the actual range of the set, but it draws a lot more current on the batteries. So it was a, a kind of a sensible idea. Uh, with this. Now, what we're going to do first is set the VCO. So what we'll do is switch the power on. The display came up, it's on channel 20. It goes out to save the battery. Incidentally, you press the, there's a black button just there, the, the little pips missing on this particular set. There's the PTT bar. You press that and the channel display comes up for you. Then it comes, goes off after a few seconds. That's how they normally work. What we're just going to do, I'll just zoom in on that VCO test point. I've got the service manual in front of me. Let's see if we can just get right in on that. There we go. It's test point number three. And it's channel 40. It's just there. There's a little purple thing on it. And that is the test point. And what you're looking for is five volts on transmit. So we're going to transmit. which we've got and we've got 5 volts on receive now we pop down to channel 40 channel 1 sorry and we need to make sure that's above about uh, two and a half, three 3 volts on transmit which it is and then again on receive yep of course that's spot on if that was out I will just tell you which coils they are I'm just referring to the service manual now It is L2 for receive. So let's find L2 for you. There's pages of this service manual. It's uh, very versatile with fault finding charts and everything. So L2 would be 
that one there. In fact, I'll just use the yellow stick so you can just see it, but it would have to use the uh, little phosphor bronze one I have. Uh, so that's the receive one. And referring back to the service manual, the transmit one is TC1. And TC1 is in fact that one there. I think TC2, if I seem to remember rightly, is the frequency adjustment one for the um, master oscillator. And I'll just check that for you while I've got the service menu in front of me. Yes, it's TC2 there. And I'll just set that right now. So I'm going to go into transmit. But incidentally, the screen cover goes over that. So that will need to go back on at the end of the uh, procedure. We'll just zoom out from there. Move the radio along to see what we're doing. I'm going to go into transmit. I'll switch the test set. You'll get my shoulder on here, but we'll switch the test set. No, you won't. Well, just about to get my shoulder. And... We'll just make sure that's on frequency. It should be 27.79125 for channel 20, which is in the centre of the band, of course. And would you believe it, it's showing 27.79125. That's not bad for its last service from 16 years ago. OK. Going to check the deviation. I'm going to use my little oscillator which we have here. Now that looks a little on the low side. We'll just give it the whistle. <laughs> no, it's not on the low side. Okay. Yeah, that's about 1.6 with the oscillator and two and a half absolute maximum with a loud whistle so that's spot on as well however if you do need to adjust the deviation on these I'll just tell you what that is and it's VR1 and VR1 just going back to the service manual is I'll just turn that back to there VR1 is in fact the preset just there Okay, so if we tune up the transmitter, which we're now going to do, we're looking to start at L5. Now, because this is transmitting, I'm not going to have to start going on to test points. There are test points, and of course the service manual uh, is no doubt available. Certainly we have a copy. So L5, is in, we're going to transmit, and L5 is our first port of call. It says so here anyway. And L5 is the, is that one, which is a bizarre, I would have said it was a bizarre way of starting, but that's what the service manual says. But believe it or not, our normal tool there doesn't fit these. Try the next one. Oh, that, that's the one. It's the RS Blue tool. We're just peaking that for maximum. There we go. The next one in line is T6 followed by T7 and T8. Now T6, I'll use the yellow tool so you can see, is that one, followed by T7, which is that one, followed by T8, which is that one. So we'll just do that. I'm going into transmit. Peaked on that one. 
that's peaked on that one and that's peaked on that one and then finally normally you have a potentiometer to just set back the power off to three and a half watts on this particular set it's a matter of adjusting uh, there's two just here, I'll just uh, move the setup so we can see there's that one and there's that one but we're already achieving the power we're looking for so on this occasion I don't need to touch either of those, they're already okay and that's basically the transmitter alignment and the VCO alignment on the realistic TRC-1001. You probably realise it's a very versatile radio even to, by today's standards. They're big and they're chunky and it does make them a bit old fashioned for, and they are of course 30 years old. Some of the things they suffer from, they've got, it's a double sided printed circuit board and whereas you get modern products which are painted, uh, plated through the board in gold, it's just pins which are tin metal pins which go through and you can end up with dry joints from one side of the board to the other uh, I'll just see if I can show you any a classic one would be that one if I just put the yellow tool down there and move this set up just down there see if we can zoom in on that is There we go. You see, there's like a solder blob next to that resistor. And that is typical of one of the through board uh, track links which can fail. If that one fails, you end up with no audio on receive. We have a lot of these still coming in because, this, as I say, they're very versatile sets. The other day, I went to collect a, a vehicle which had been bought, you know, you go up with a friend to go and get a car and you, you come back with the car and you've got two of you, one's in the car you went up in, one's in the new car you've just bought and you haven't got a TB in the car you've just bought so you sling one of these on the seat, you stick a mag mount on the roof and by plugging an external aerial in, you're quite legal and safe to use that in the UK anyway, uh, whilst on the move whereas you can't, of course, pull a handheld up to you your face, so you end up under those mobile phone laws. So there we are, that's realistic uh, TRC 1001, um, and uh, we'll go over to the receiver on the next video.